Hey, Good News family. This is Tana Heineman, the host of our Now What podcast. This is where we unpack Sunday's message and we talk about how to practically apply it to our everyday lives. I love that you're here with us, and I love that we get the opportunity to spend more time with our pastors and have them teach us even more what the Word has to say about our everyday lives. We learn from Jesus that one of the best ways to grow is in community together. So join us as we unpack Sunday's message. Hey, Good News family, how are you? How was your Resurrection Sunday? I love Easter, and I don't know if you guys were at that Good Friday service, but it was on point. I loved it so much. Josh got me to cry, and I think he didn't even cry. Like, that's impressive, too, but it was a really good service, and Easter was awesome. I hope you guys had a great Easter. Just celebrating that Jesus would die for me and then continue to show me such grace and mercy along the journey is just really impossible to grasp, but I love, love, love this time of year. And how about PJ's message? It was so good. good. It was uh, eight different types of people showing us how Jesus responds to them no matter where they're at in their journey. Um, So super excited to talk about that today. But you've you've heard I have somebody with me today. It's not PJ. I want to introduce to you Justin Graves. He's one of our faithful members and family members here at Good News Church. Hey, Justin. Hello. Thank nice you. to meet you, everyone. Yeah, thanks for coming on today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was really excited with this message and thinking about how people will see themselves mm. in the examples he's given. And so um, our listeners are starting to get used to the fact that on a Sunday morning, I'm just trying to process uh, who would be a really good person to talk to about this message. And you were the one that came to mind. So I'm really glad we can make it work. And the finagling that happens behind the scenes, we've got somebody watching the baby downstairs, mm-hmm. keeping us a bit, you know, keeping us, uh, uh, keeping it quiet so yeah. we can actually visit and talk about this. So let's start first by getting to know you. Introduce yourself to us, your family, maybe how long you've been at Good News, anything you'd like us to know. Okay, yeah. So. Let's see, when I was really young, I would say like eight or nine, my family came here uh, when it was Glad Tidings. Speaking of, yes, PR and I, a couple weeks oh, ago. Not the picture. We found it. No. We pulled out the old church directory and yes. we found it. There you are. Yes. Your sweet little Nobody childhood looked at, self. Yeah, don't look at that picture. If you have the burgundy old Glad Tidings church directory, Burn we're both page. in there and it's it's not good. Not it's not good. good. Not good. Mm-mm. Yeah, that was, uh, it was an, you know, I have a, a different backstory. My dad was you know, struggling with addictions and stuff. So my childhood was pretty rough and there's a backstory to that picture as well. It mm. wasn't, I mean, you can tell in my eyes and mm. the rest of the family, it was it was a pretty rough time. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, he, he definitely tried, you know, to mm-hmm. follow Christ and, and give it a go. It's just, he, he took a few too many hits on mm-hmm. his heart that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it was hard for him to come back from that. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, so pretty rough childhood. Uh, my mom is a saint. You know, she's an angel. She she definitely took care of us and kept us safe and um, all that. And then I, you know, when I was in the uh, in high school, I decided to go to the Marines. I wanted to serve my country and and protect. So I went to the Marines for a few years. Um, should I talk about? Go wherever you want. Okay, uh, I'll just briefly talk about um, when I was in Afghanistan in 2011. Um, I I got shot. Um, while on a uh, a mission and so i had to get out i had to learn how to walk again the bullet took out two of my nerves um and then i struggled with ptsd and depression mm-hmm. still to this day mm-hmm. but uh it was really rough um when i got out in 2013 um but i've always had like a really you know like a really interesting heart for the lord like mm-hmm. you know i wanted to be friends with with jesus and chase after god i just um, maybe it wasn't the top of my priority list. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've tried many different churches and, you know, it's kind of like a roller coaster ride where I'll go to church for a long time and kind of dive in and, and try to get acc- acclimated to the, to the culture of, uh, Christianity and then fall out. You know, I struggled with my own addictions, alcohol, and, uh, not wanting to be a good husband or a good father, being very selfish with my own time. Mm-hmm. Um, so definitely, um, I got married in 2013 with my beautiful wife, Rachel, who mm-hmm. you know, and uh, we're high school sweethearts. We've been married for almost 12 years. So we got, got married in 2012. Okay. Get it right. Yeah. yeah I'm in trouble, in trouble for that one. Mm-hmm. I always get it right. Mm-hmm. Now, the one time that it's <laughs> documented, I You're get nervous. it wrong. You're nervous. You're nervous. Yeah, I'm it's nervous. Fine. 2012. Okay. 2012. Mm-hmm. So almost 12 years. Um, and her and I, like we've, you know, stuck through it 
thick and thin. She's definitely been my my rock, uh, as well as Jesus, obviously. But um, how just, many kids I, do you have? We have three kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a ten year old girl, almost ten, a six year old boy, and then little Fletcher that we were just talking about. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's one. Mm-hmm. Um, so That's good. just kind of on this path of trying to be a, a better man and, mm-hmm. and get closer to God. And I don't know why the Holy Spirit told you to bring me here, but here I am and, <laughs> and I'm listening. You, I've learned to listen to the Holy Spirit. So that's good. I, don't I say think, no. I think you have a story to tell and you have a journey. Um, and even with the message for Easter Sunday being called, tell me the story mm-hmm. and the story we're referring to is the story of Jesus, but the story of Jesus is not just what's in the Bible. It's the story of Jesus in you, the yep. story of Jesus in me, because our lives are simply for him to receive the glory because Absolutely. he's so good and so kind to us. Amen. So that's why I want you here. And we're going to jump into, cause even you hit on some things, even with, um, parts of your journey that I am certain happened as you recognized yourself in some of the people that pastor Jason, yep. uh, gave us examples of so um and i know like even i was thinking about you and rachel and what i do know of your story and i think dear lord you guys have lived in your young ages more than a lot of us twice your age have lived in that same amount of time like Mm -hmm. it is it's unfathomable to me oh and speaking of twice your age oh i'm not quite twice your age but (laughs) on sunday I was getting Justin's email address because I was going to send him some notes for the podcast. And I say, Oh, you know, what's your email or whatever. And he says it and he says 1992 something at Gmail. And I go, let me guess that's the year you were born. And he's like, yep. And I said, huh, I was pregnant in 1992. And he says, so was my mom. Oh, but a bum. <laughs> Thank you for pointing out that I'm old enough to be your mother. That's yeah. really, really great. Yeah. It was all awesome. in love. It uh-huh. was all in jest. Uh-huh. And... Later on, he called me ma'am. I'm like, that's also code for old lady. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. Let's really get serious. Um, <clears throat> what I love about actually with you and Rachel is your unrelenting pursuit of Jesus. And you've mm-hmm. even said that a little bit already. And that's the words that come to my mind when I think of you guys and your journey. You get knocked down by life. You knock your own selves down mm-hmm. and you still are unrelenting in your pursuit of Jesus, no matter what. And I love that. And I want our listeners to know that no matter where they're at in the journey, dig and find that unrelenting grit to keep pursuing him yep. and to know him and to trust him. So because of this, I know God wants to speak to you or speak through you today. Let's, I'm going to go through really quick the, um, the eight different types types of people that PJ talked about on Sunday. Uh, unqualified, skeptical but curious, the broken, shame from sexual sin, the one who mocks God, the doubter, and the historian and the researcher. So when I go through all of those, I wonder which one jumped out at you first and you're like, yeah, this is me. And it might have been right away at the beginning. Yeah, I would say... Um definitely at some point I, I almost relate with each one of them yeah um and to like a different you know a different extent mm-hmm. some more than others but i would definitely say that <clears throat> the the broken one mm-hmm. and and the uh unqualified mm-hmm. definitely i think i've struggled there the most um because you know i've been in you know i've been chasing after jesus for for many years and I've backslid a lot. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of times and like, like a lot of my friends, like, uh, can I call out, uh, pastor Isaiah real quick, mm-hmm. really, really anybody. close buddy of mine and, mm-hmm. and Sam Polinsky, uh, mm-hmm. one of my battle buddies. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, feeling unqualified. Yeah. Feeling mm-hmm. unqualified. So mm-hmm. all, all these, all of these guys, um, you know, they have a, a deep background in their faith mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, their, their parents are pastors or they've been in church for a long time and they can quote scripture mm-hmm. and they can tell you all these stories. Um, and I can't do that. Mm-hmm. Not yet. Mm-hmm. Um, it, and it, it, it is, it's tough, you know, trying to come into a crowd where <clears throat> you feel like you're kind of lesser, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. if you're, you're, you're starting a new sport and, uh, you're playing with people who's been playing it for 15 years mm-hmm. and you might not be as good you know, or as athletic or, or whatever. Um, but you do have to start somewhere and that's kind of like where I'm at. Like I've been doing this for a while. Um, so that's where it's kind of been frustrating how I feel like I'm still unqualified. Mm -hmm. 
um, because I have been following Jesus for, for many years, but I haven't been doing it the right way. Mm -hmm. Um, so my qualifications haven't, haven't, you know, I haven't met those qualifications yet, but I'm learning how to do that. You know, how to, it's got to start with the relationship with Jesus first Mm -hmm. and then everything else will fall into line. Mm -hmm. Um, like now that, um, you know, I'm, I'm really wanting to have that relationship, have a deep, real relationship with Jesus. Um, I'm really starting to dive into scripture more. Mm-hmm. And with that, you know, I'm really excited to know, like, what did Jesus really do? You know, what did he really mean when he said this and this? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm getting really excited about the stories mm-hmm. and who he really was. And now, you know, when I'm talking to people or, you know, whether it's people who have been in the church for a long time or, you know, people who haven't come to church at all is... I can, I'm starting to be able to quote scripture or at least bring up some stories, yeah. you know, and, and, and that just feels good. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I, I've been, you know, in the pew for a while and, um, and I never like really took notes or whatever. So, and, and it would be frustrating and, um, but I don't know. I don't mm-hmm. know. I think it's just, I think it's a process. Um, and if you feel unqualified, like you have to start somewhere and like Jesus doesn't care if you can quote scripture, right? Like he doesn't care, you know, if you know who Job is, Mm -hmm. um, he just wants your heart to be after him. Mm -hmm. Well, I think too, um, sometimes the enemy does, uh, really lazy, uh, tricks is what he does is in my opinion, it's lazy, but he, if he can get you to think that you're unqualified or you don't know enough or whatever, but you think about the disciples and, Uh, Jesus picked all of them. That was PJ's example was the disciples are completely unqualified. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who, who were probably, um, they were Jewish. And so they would have been in the temples. They would have been learning from a small child and they didn't really make the cut. They didn't Mm -hmm. get chosen by a rabbi to continue to follow. So they found a different path and became fishermen and tax collectors that he wouldn't have been probably following. But anyways, I don't know all of my history, but, um, the point is that they, um, they already were kind of unqualified yeah. and then he picks them and you think, okay, they follow Jesus for three, three and a half years and they're like right there yeah. watching everything. And yet they still drop the ball when it really matters. Yeah. They could not, they could not shake their fear. They suddenly went back to everything they used to know and suddenly they were denying him, um, running and hiding all of those kind of things. So it's like, we are, we're not walking tangibly right here physically yep. with him. And so for the enemy to come in and make us feel disqualified, it's like, we got to look back at the truth of what yeah. was happening. And we are just humans. And one of my favorite stories also is Adam and Eve in the Bible in Genesis in the garden. And they say, um, they, they are living right there in pure perfection yeah. with God it says walking with God. Yep. And yet they still could get pulled away by the enemy of like, oh, wait, there could be something more like you are in perfection and they still couldn't do it. So again, God knows who we are and he knows that, yeah, as humans, we are unqualified and he thinks we're the greatest, so great that he would send his son for us. So that unqualified stuff is it lingers way too long for the truth of what of what what God really feels towards us. It's really frustrating because it is a really genuine battle that I think most of us have. It's very intimidating, Mm -hmm. you know, like, like I said, like it's, it's coming from, you know, not having a background of of going to church all the time or, Mm -hmm. you know, my, my parents being pastors or uh, serving in the church. It's very intimidating from the outside. Mm -hmm. Um, But, but you have to take that step, you know, like, like, uh, you know, I do jujitsu. And one of the mm-hmm. hardest things that I say about jujitsu is that first step, mm-hmm. taking the step in the door. But yeah. once you, once you take a step, you know, be ready to be ready to run. Mm-hmm. Um, don't be intimidated. It's, it's I'm going to be, I'm going to be intimidated walking into. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be intimidated mm-hmm. there, but I get, I get the analogy. Yeah. Uh, tell me another one. What's another one you were identified with from PJ's message? Um, I mean, really all of them. Mm-hmm. I, I really did all of them. Um, but I think the broken mm-hmm. that kind of goes hand in hand, um, just because, like I said, my background, mm-hmm. like I felt so, uh, like it was rough. Mm-hmm. Like I went through some really rough stuff, mm-hmm. not only as a kid, but you know, in the Marines, mm-hmm. you know, like they, you know, they taught us, I wasn't just in the Marines. Like I was in the infantry, like mm-hmm. taught us to kick in doors and find bad guys and mm-hmm. 
Um, <clears throat> so I definitely felt, you know, broken and like I cuss more than most Christians <laughs> and, uh, you know, with my background, you know, like my dad would emotionally abuse us and, <laughs> and physically abuse us. So with that comes with, you know, like my ego is shot and, uh, I'm more introverted. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm just in all these different ways I'm broken, you know, mm -hmm. I have my own addictions and my own struggles that I deal with. And it's really hard to, when you, um, when you're going through a time of brokenness, uh, or you're struggling with, with a battle, it's hard to lay that out to Jesus mm -hmm. and, and, and come back, you know, sometimes like maybe I got really angry at the kids on Saturday and said some things that I didn't want to didn't want to say so I don't really want to go to church right now because mm -hmm. I don't feel like mm -hmm. you know God is going to accept me right now or mm -hmm. he doesn't want me to and that's a lie mm -hmm. that's the devil mm -hmm. he absolutely the, the first thing you should do mm -hmm. is open up your book and you know and, mm -hmm. and, and read some scripture or, or pray mm -hmm. or uh, just go to God can you do that can you do that can you do that I can do that good absolutely how did you get to the point where maybe originally or earlier on you would hide or I don't want to go or I don't want to face him. I don't want to face the kids or whatever to being able to go. Yeah. Most of the time now mm -hmm. I'll go, I'll go before him. I'll go to church. I will repent, whatever. How'd you get there? So, uh, just understanding. And honestly, like you have to take like a self assessment of like, okay, where am I? How am I broken? Why am I broken? And, and honestly, a lot of it comes with like just having a good, what we call the Marines, a battle buddy, someone that you can talk to, mm -hmm. be honest with, truthful with, like, this is what I'm struggling with. Mm -hmm. Um, and can I shout out my beautiful wife real quick? Yes. Okay. I'm trying, like, I don't know why I'm like super emotional right now mm. and I'm trying not to be, but <clears throat> a couple nights ago, uh, my wife and I were kind of, you know, bickering at each other, really upset. <clears throat> and, um, and usually, you know, sometimes we'll like, go to bed kind of angry at each other or not really settle things or whatever. Mm -hmm. And she did something that like, oh, it like lit my heart up mm -hmm. and I'm trying. You can be emotional. I know. <clears throat> I don't like to be. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> if, uh, yeah. Uh, but she said, she just stopped and she said, can you pray for us? Mm -hmm. And to me, that's like, you know, that's what I need mm -hmm. and that's what I want. And that's what she wants and that's what she needs. Mm -hmm. And so I paused and we we're, we're learning to pray with each other more and more because it, it like, it helps so much, but mm -hmm. I paused and I said, absolutely. So mm -hmm. I prayed for us and it was probably one of the best prayers mm -hmm. that, you know, cause mm -hmm. it was just so raw and mm -hmm. emotional and, mm -hmm. and it was great. So, um, but before I think a lot of the times getting angry or, uh, a lot of my issues with like PTSD was depression mm. and the devil was trying to, you know, keep me away and, you know, get me alone thinking in my own thoughts and getting angry. But, um, I, t to answer your question, I don't know if there ever was like a, like a, a turning point mm -hmm. where I was like, I just need to pray. Mm -hmm. You know, I just need to take some time alone, mm -hmm. go on the word or really think about, you know, but I will say, um, I would say the beginning of this year, the mm -hmm. fast that we did, mm -hmm. the, uh, 2140, 2140. Yep. Mm -hmm. See my memory guys. Mm -hmm. right? <laughs> Don't even start I, talking I, about memory. <laughs> <laughs> the 2140 was honestly one of the biggest like turning points for me, mm. like with, with so much, like I was, I would, I would say I was on the come up mm -hmm. with my, with my faith and my, in my walk in my faith and, uh, chasing Jesus then. But that one really like, it pushed me over the edge, I think. Mm -hmm. Like that's when, you know, Sam Polinsky and I, we started doing our uh, Bible study every mm -hmm. morning mm -hmm. and waking up every morning with a cup of coffee mm -hmm. and just reading the Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's like, that's when I'm, you know, really starting to fall in love mm -hmm. with Jesus and, and okay. learning these stories and, mm -hmm. and, and like now I'm excited. Mm -hmm. like I can't wait to go to bed so I can wake up Mm -hmm. fire up my coffee and, mm -hmm. and read. And then I send Sam this ridiculously long <laughs> text where literally like I'm, I can't type anymore. So I have mm -hmm. to go back and delete like small words so I can fit it all in this. <laughs> I think that's extreme. because you have a droid. Yeah. You, you, need, you need to be on an iPhone. Yeah, no yeah. way. No. Okay. No okay. Way. okay yeah, fine. Yeah. I'll think mm -hmm. about it. I'll think about it. <laughs> uh, even just thinking about the emotion of how you felt with Rachel that night, it actually made me picture, we were talking offline about the chosen. Yeah. 
And I don't remember if you're, you're in season three, I think you said. Yeah. So have you seen the episode where Jesus actually meets the woman at the well? Like PJ talked about I, it. Yeah. I, yeah, I slightly remember that. Okay. So, um, so Jesus meets her at the mm -hmm. well and there's a moment where she's emotional and Jesus is emotional in that scene. Well, I was watching these um, bonus cuts where they're interviewing the guy who plays Jesus and they were talking about, they asked him a question about, um, there's times where um, it's not scripted for you to cry, yeah. but we tend to see some emotion. And he talked about that scene and he said, he said, I, I was so overcome with emotion thinking about how much Jesus loved that woman yeah. and how he was willing to go against anything that the disciples would think if any guys approached the well and saw him talking to this woman, um, how she would have felt to have this man speak to her and speak life to her spirit. And the, and the, he said he couldn't hold in his emotion, even though it wasn't scripted. It was such a beautiful moment. And him talking about acting that moment changed the way I even read yeah. that story. Wow. And thinking about you and Rachel of just her seeing value and worth in you and your pursuit of Jesus was what made her say, will you, pr she could have said, I'm going to pray. Yeah. No, she said, I yeah. see value in you leading our family. And so I'm asking you to pray over us because yeah. I believe that you can talk to God for us. Yeah. And that's just powerful. The value powerful. and the worth that we um, are all missing, all humanity, it doesn't matter how famous, doesn't matter how, how wealthy, doesn't matter how popular, how many followers you have. All of us have this thing inside of us that says we're still not valuable or worth it. Mm -hmm. And until Jesus can start healing these places in us and show you your value. Yeah. Uh, I really, really loved that when, when PJ was talking about just what Jesus was willing to do and just defy everything of the norms to go out of his way to make sure she knew. And then what did she do with it? She took it back to her hometown mm -hmm. and said, y'all got to come see this guy. He told me everything I've ever done. And, and then her town is all changed and starts following and believing in Jesus. Yeah. How many of us have a story of learning our value before God, and yet we have been ashamed to go say our story out loud so that other people can come and know this Jesus? Yeah. There's a great responsibility we have yeah. in that, and we can't be afraid to share our story, Yeah. which absolutely. again goes back to why I wanted you yeah. on here today. Can I, can I piggyback off that twice, actually? Um, I feel like... I've been the woman at the well more than once, mm -hmm. like multiple times. And like, but every time Jesus is like, it's okay. You mm -hmm. know, it's mm -hmm. okay. Like I'll, I'll come back here and, mm -hmm. and talk to you and, and love on you. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then somehow I find myself back at the well, you mm -hmm. know, what, one of my brokenness, uh, issues coming back up, mm -hmm. you know, and, um, and every time, like, I can't even like explain the amount of miracles that I've seen, like the, mm -hmm. the, just the story of me getting shot, like a hundred percent miracle. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and all the things that I've been through, like, mm -hmm. you know, rollover accidents mm -hmm. and, um, just gone through so much. Mm -hmm. And every time, like I keep asking, like, why am I so special Jesus? But mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not mm -hmm. special at all. He does the same thing for everyone. It's mm -hmm. just whether you choose to, mm -hmm. to see what he's doing for you and the, you know, the miracles that he works for you Yeah, is whether you choose to see that or not. Mm -hmm. it, that, that choice part is really big. That's that action part. Mm -hmm. You were talking to me offline about what you saw in the passage that PJ shared with the women going yeah. to the tomb. Will you tell me, tell us more about that? Yeah. So it was, uh, it's go and see. Is, uh, uh, is it in the Matthew 28? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me, uh, it's, I don't think I have it on here, but you might have it. Yeah. So Matthew 28, six. Yeah. Yeah. The angel talking to Mary and mm -hmm. the other Mary. And which the other was Mary. Hilarious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like in all my notes, I keep putting the other Mary, like that's stuck <laughs> now. Uh, so Matthew 28, six says he is not here. He has risen just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Mm -hmm. and come and see like that's it's a call to action mm -hmm. it's not sit there and be stagnant mm -hmm. and wait to see mm -hmm. it's come and see like mm -hmm. there's there's a component of uh a faith in there like yeah. you have to there's something that you have to do mm -hmm. before you know you get the truth mm -hmm. so you have to do your part and that's the issue w where i've been for the past 10 years you know i call him 
you know, chasing Jesus, but I wasn't really chasing Jesus. Mm. I was, I've been waiting for Jesus. Mm. And this is, you know, that's the component where it says, come and see. Like, mm. and, and this is Mary and other Mary. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like they've been with Jesus through so much. Mm -hmm. And still the angel tells them that they have to have an act of faith. Yeah. Come and see. Mm -hmm. And, the, you know, once they go, then they see the truth. Mm -hmm. And then there's another part in there that I, that I loved um, where, uh, let's see. I can't find it, but I'll just, yeah. I, so after they did that, they, they answered the call to action. They went and they saw, mm -hmm. and they, you know, they had the truth and they were excited. And the angel mm -hmm. says, okay, now go tell everyone else. And it says that then immediately Jesus came to them. Mm -hmm. Like they didn't, you know, it's Jesus rewarded them like immediately. Yeah. Like you, you, you did what you were told. Mm -hmm. You, you took that leap of faith mm -hmm. and now here I am. So good. Yeah. That's really good. Look at you. See, God is speaking to you. You're writing like mini sermons over here. Um, how about, how about doubting? Oh, doubt is huge. Mm -hmm. It's so, I think, I hope uh, it's, it's a aspect of maybe every Christian because I, I doubt mm -hmm. there are times where, you know, maybe there's some outside talk, you know, mm -hmm. like I won't bring up anyone specific, but a family member, you know, like they question things or they mm -hmm. say things mm -hmm. or they joke about things. Mm -hmm. And I defend Jesus in the time, but then I'm like, well, maybe, you know, mm -hmm. but what if that's true? But then you just have to go back to the word mm -hmm. and read. And, and there's that large component of faith where uh, you just know, mm -hmm. like the Holy Spirit's in your heart and you know mm -hmm. that. I can't remember if he said that on Sunday or if it was in another conversation I was having with him. Um, but there is that point of, um, of decision of, of faith that, mm -hmm. uh, we have to, we can't, he, I think he said it in his message, like, I can't prove it to you. Everything. Yes. There has to yes. be an element of revelation yep. and then a choice for me to ch choose to believe it. Yeah. But then once you know him, yeah. once you've experienced it, it's, it's going to be pretty near impossible for you to tell. It's impossible yeah. for you to tell me that it wasn't God, that yeah. God wasn't actually evident and in those moments yep. because you've experienced him. Yep. And it just takes that time of happening that you're like, yeah, there's no doubt anymore. Yeah, absolutely. That's like the, you can take the horse to the water, but you can't make him drink. It. Right. And it's that's, one of my favorite lines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's a hundred percent how it is. You mm -hmm. can tell someone about Jesus in, but until, you know, the mm -hmm. Holy spirit comes to them mm -hmm. and they experience it. It's, mm -hmm. it's their choice. Like they have to open up. And sometimes that's hard for certain of our personalities where I would like to take the horse to water and like make him get a drink. Like <laughs> I know, I know what's yeah. better for it. I know what yeah. you need. Cause I needed it too. I can see it all over you. Get yeah. a drink, won't get a drink. And that's really hard to then be like, okay, God, what is my role yeah. and what is your role? And I need to trust you. Um, yeah. but again, that ultimate decision has to come from each of us yeah. to come and see yeah. and know even the, the skeptic, uh, no, no, no. The historian and the researcher, when he was talking about that scientist, Francis Collins yep. and how even science is c continues to, to challenge the atheist and agnostic of like, dude, there are so many things that are yeah. absolutely impossible yeah. for there not to be perfect design here. Yeah. And then that wrestle and even how he had a moral conviction, uh, he had a moral compass in him, really not quite sure why. And then Jay said, um, uh, he said, science is saying like, um, how do you word it? Like, there's nowhere that science shows why any, and anyone would love their enemy. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. That's a really powerful yeah. statement to think about. Like Jesus, Jesus loved his enemies again, mm -hmm. because I love Easter so much. And you go all the way back, you go back to Palm Sunday even, and the very same people who were worshiping him and so excited that he was coming four days later, four days later are wanting him crucified. Yeah. Turn, turn their back on him. Yep. Turn their back on him. Yeah. Um, he talked about mocking and he talked about the thief mocking. And yep. I'm thinking about all the people who were on the ground mocking him the whole time yep. and all of that. And Jesus didn't feel he, he didn't defend himself. Yeah. Uh, he just instead stayed quiet. I, I often wonder what was going through his mind. Was he talking to his father during all that time when he was quiet? Mm -hmm. And then the few moments that he did speak were un so unbelievable and yeah. full of love of just, they don't even know what they're doing. God, just forgive them. Yeah. Um, is, is, is just so, 
I don't know. I get ridiculously sappy about it, but yeah. it's so cool. That's great. Um, yeah, and he talked about the uh, the thieves, the two thieves, mm -hmm. how one hit had that revelation mm -hmm. at the last moment. Yeah. And he said, "Remember me. Yeah. Remember me when you go to heaven." And Jesus said, "I will." Yeah. I will. And There's a lot of grace in that statement right there mm -hmm. for when we're trying to figure out how to follow him or we put ourselves on a timeline of, I should know this by now. I should be better at this by now or whatever. And Jesus is like, the dude's on the cross. He is moments away from death and yeah. I still showed grace and mercy to him and he will be with me. Yeah. So I I'm pretty sure he's got enough grace and mercy yeah. for each of it's us in our your journey. Heart. It's yeah. not about your actions. Mm -hmm. Cause I mean, at that point that, that thief had, he had no opportunity to make any actions. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now I just got sidetracked. Sorry, Josh was off camera and I forgot what I was going to say. Can, can uh, I talk about, uh, you don't have to ask okay, me, just talk. Okay, I will fill in the empty Please, space. Ma am, ma right. Ma yeah. That. Stop calling me ma'am. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I wanted to talk about, so you, you talked about the chosen earlier mm -hmm. and there's a scene it's in the first season about Nicodemus okay. and, and mm -hmm. PJ talked about Nicodemus mm -hmm. and it's so, I guess it's not technically biblically accurate for the sense, cause it never said that it happened in the Bible per se, mm -hmm. but there's a point that like, talk about emotional, like you want to see a mm -hmm. man cry when mm -hmm. the first time that Rachel and I were watching that. So it's when they're all packing up, right? And he's been working on Nicodemus. Jesus mm -hmm. has been working on Nicodemus, you know, trying to get him to follow him. Mm -hmm. And, and they're packing up, getting ready to leave. And Nicodemus is hiding behind the corner. Mm -hmm. He's around the corner and, uh, he's just broken and like crying and mm. and jesus is like okay is that everyone mm. and i think peter and someone's like yeah that's everyone we're all good let's roll and he's like okay no really is that everyone mm. and you can hear nicodemus just break mm. and gosh i don't know why i'm <laughs> so emotional over here but and he says uh he looks toward nicodemus who's still hiding behind the corner and he says you were so close mm. you were so close mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and Nicodemus just breaks down mm -hmm. and oh my gosh like how many times have I related mm -hmm. to that exact moment you know like mm -hmm. I bet that you know Jesus was around the corner mm -hmm. or like you know nearby and he was mm -hmm. like Justin you were so close mm -hmm. you know you you were almost there mm -hmm. to chase me but mm -hmm. you chose not to mm -hmm. and and you, it's hard to fault Nicodemus like mm -hmm. he had a mm -hmm. he had a wife mm -hmm. and a, a child and his I think it was his daughter just had a kid as well, okay. right? I don't remember the details. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I'm like, wow, if, if Jesus asked me right now to just drop everything, mm -hmm. leave everyone behind and follow mm -hmm. him, like, would I? Mm -hmm. Like, that's so, mm -hmm. that's so tough. So it's hard to fault Nicodemus, but. Yeah, because he was a religious leader. He was wealthy. <clears throat> so it would be giving up everything of his mm -hmm. title, of his income, all of yeah. those things to follow Jesus. I mean, there could be risk of. Um, harm to his family, yeah. all of those things to follow. And he yeah. just couldn't quite get there. But then like Jay showed us, you know, then you watch and he's later on, he's defending Jesus. Yep. So he's getting more bold he helps him with his burial. and he helps with his burial. Yeah. So I found myself yeah. wondering on Sunday, like I need to go do some more research. I don't know if Nicodemus ever comes back up. Like, do we know where he landed in this? But my hope would be that he became a follower of mm -hmm. Jesus. He may have just been a little bit more quiet or subtle about it. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but it, it's very interesting. We, we, sometimes we read the Bible so quick and we read over stories that we don't catch how it all goes together or maybe what one gospel documented that another author didn't. Um, and so putting that all together and seeing, wow, Nicodemus was so close, mm -hmm. but then he did defend him later and then he did help bury him. So where did that land? Yeah. Um, That's such a good question. And then thinking about you saying that, like Jesus saying to you, ah, Justin, you were so close. You were so close. The beautiful thing is, is he never stopped being right around the corner. Oh, absolutely. So Always that then there. when you were right there and you finally did turn the corner, he mm -hmm. was right there. He never gave up on you. Yeah. And our listeners need to know, like, Jesus is always right there. You can't out sin him. Yeah. You can't walk away too many times. Mm. He is always, he's so merciful that it, if you would just take the step and don't let any other lies keep you from following the truth that you know in your gut is the truth. Yeah. Uh, we can't out sin him. Yeah. I'm Tell gonna, me what else. I'm going to ask you again. Yeah. Can, can I say something? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so <clears throat> uh, the Holy Spirit revealed something to me. So I love like... 
I love like similes and metaphors mm -hmm. and and I love Jesus's parables. Mm -hmm. Like I am, Rachel hates it mm -hmm. because everything I do, I have to explain it. Like, like I, I sent you my notes and I'm mm -hmm. sure you saw, like I said something about like, you know, if, if I was a Husker fan and I didn't know yes. the, and I didn't know who the quarterback was, am I really a Husker fan? Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of where mm -hmm. I was going. So I love like parables and different stories. And are you going to write a book? Justin's parables? I already started. Oh, Hey, no, okay. I didn't. Okay. No, I didn't. Um, but there was something that when I was going through, uh, when I lived in Arkansas, like it was probably seven, eight years ago, I lived in Arkansas for five years or so. And I was going through like heavy depression. I was finally learning, you know, to trust in Jesus and mm -hmm. let me, you know, let him help me with my depression and the issues that I was going through. And he gave me this vision, like clear as day. Um, and it's like, you're driving on a highway and it's a never ending highway. Mm. And you can't sleep because you're driving, right? There's no self driving cars in this vision. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and you get tired and you get exhausted and your eyes get heavy. And as you're driving, uh, you look over and you see, you see Jesus at like a rest stop and he's waving and he's like, Hey, pull over, let me drive. Oh man. What, what do y'all got in here? Is this, <laughs> what is in this water? <laughs> Emotional water. And he says, uh, he says, let me drive. And, and this is like the story of my life. Like, mm -hmm. and I'm like, no, Jesus, I got this. Let me drive. Mm -hmm. So I keep driving and driving and driving. And I start to doze off and nod off. I'm so tired and exhausted. And I see him again waving. You know, he's not, <clears throat> he's not forcing me. He's not pulling me over like the cop in the rain that Josh and I were just talking about. Mm -hmm. But just nonchalantly, hey, let me, come on over here. Let me drive. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, Jesus, I got this. You know, mm -hmm. let me control my own life. Mm -hmm. And I keep on driving and driving and driving. And maybe I hit a deer on the way, but I got to keep driving and driving and driving. I got a flat tire, but I got to keep driving. And all these things keep happening. I'm so tired and exhausted. And maybe I even lost my direction. I don't even know where I'm going at this point. I'm mm -hmm. just driving. And, you know, I look over and I see Jesus at a rest stop. And he's like, I got the map. Mm -hmm. You know, I got the fresh tire that you need. Mm -hmm. I got everything. Just pull over and, and let me help you. And me being me, you know, the Marine in me, I'm like, I got this, Jesus. Like, mm -hmm. trust me. And eventually I'm going to crash. Mm -hmm. And, you know, whether it's, you know, fall into addiction or, or, you know, the depression that I struggle with or, you know, the anger or whatever it is. And at some point, this was before, now it's a little bit different. Now I'm, I'm hundred percent okay with pulling over. Mm -hmm. But, uh, after I crash, I have to like decide, you know, am mm -hmm. I going to let Jesus into my car now, mm -hmm. you know, and before I did. I did let him in. Eventually I'd pull over and let Jesus in, but he's in the back seat. Mm. You know, hop in the back seat, Jesus. Like you can you can hang out while I drive. Mm -hmm. But now it's different. It's like, Jesus, can you drive? Mm -hmm. mm. So good. So if you've let Jesus drive, mm -hmm. you can take a nap. You can rest. Mm -hmm. You can relax. Mm -hmm. Let that anxiety and the depression go. Mm -hmm. And uh so now that's a hundred percent where I'm at so wonderful holy smokes yeah that was so good and that was a hundred percent like mm -hmm. that hit me so hard when i was in arkansas and mm -hmm. and it was one of those things like that was like a miracle to me like he he gave that to me that was one of the first times i ever opened up about getting shot in afghanistan and mm -hmm. the, the struggles that i had mm -hmm. and the issues with a, a group of men that i was uh, going to church with and he gave me that and it was so like just so like revelationary mm -hmm. or is that even a word? Revelatory, I Re think it's sure. the word. I don't know. Sure. <laughs> it was such a revelation. It was such there a revelation. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and even then, even after he gave me that, I still would, you know, mm -hmm. I would still backslide mm -hmm. and still try to drive on my own. But now I'm like, okay, I get it. Mm -hmm. I get it. It's so easy just to, mm -hmm. I don't have to take the back seat. Jesus mm -hmm. wants me to sit next to him, mm -hmm. you know, in the, in the front seat with him. And, yeah. But he'll drive and he'll drive for the rest of your life. Right. You just have to let him. Mm-hmm. I'm, that's such a, that's the truth, right? Of we just have to let him. And one of my heart cries of even this podcast or even what I do here at the church and just even my own everyday life is if I can help people figure out how to let Jesus drive sooner, mm -hmm. that's a win. Yeah. Because 
you went through the flat tire, you hit the deer, you, you, you're going off into the ditch, you're all these things. And it's like, good grief. If we mm -hmm. could just learn yeah. to let him, it's not a, it's not a hit on your pride. doesn't make you less of a man. I mean, I did yeah. notice, I, I actually said to Pastor Raphael, uh, on Sunday that I noticed how many women compared to men responded to the message. Absolutely. And there's something in that, yeah. you know, and, um, it does not make you weak. It mm. makes you strong and wise and humble and um, capable because you've said, dude, I need, I need Jesus to drive mm -hmm. and I'm going to trust him and let him drive. Yep. If we could help people figure that out sooner. Yeah. And I think it's, so one of my biggest passions that like I've been working on for a long time is I love like iron sharpens iron, mm -hmm. like men coming together. And just because like I can't stand today's you know the society's what society created as the man mm -hmm. right the alpha yeah. male mm -hmm. where you can't have any emotions and you can't communicate and everything has to be done on your own mm -hmm. and you have to be all tough and you know mm -hmm. like you can't be kind to people and I mm -hmm. like I can't stand that that's mm -hmm. so wrong and it's mm -hmm. so like there's so much wrong with that mm -hmm. like you can't be a good dad mm -hmm. you know with that alpha mentality yeah you can still be an alpha male but with a kind heart yeah and with with Jesus at your side. So I think it's also important that like what I'm not 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 recently coming to realize but uh really like honing in on how important it is that we have to have other people who are going along you know this road with us. Mm -hmm. You know like mm -hmm. like I said like you know I talked to Josh mm -hmm. or um or Sam mm -hmm. or Isaiah like mm -hmm. any of these guys I know that if I'm going through anything, I can call them up, mm -hmm. right? Or if I have questions, like I was reading, um, I don't know if I should say this because I don't want it to open up any doors, but- You were reading a book? I was reading the Bible, yeah, okay. the best mm -hmm. book ever. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I had questions mm -hmm. and I was like, I, I can't, you know, I don't really understand this. Um, and a lot of times Sam's dad will, so mm -hmm. shout out to Sam's dad. Mm -hmm. he Jim. Will, yep, Jim mm -hmm. will give us, a, give us some so insight. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I also texted Pastor Raphael mm -hmm. and I mm -hmm. said, like, I can't, like, I've done research. I, I can't, like, truly understand this. Mm -hmm. Can you help me out? And, he, mm -hmm. man, he called me, and we talked mm -hmm. on the phone about it, and it was just revelationary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, and then mm -hmm. another thing I want to touch on that, too, is this, this happened so much recently, but after, like, him and I explained that, and it would just, like, clicked in my head, and I said, that makes so much sense. And it was about Jesus being on the cross and, uh, like, why he, he was, like, Father, why are you forsaken me? Mm -hmm. Why have you forsaken me? Mm -hmm. And then I, I, like, PR, you really explained it to me. And I was like, wow, that makes so much sense. And then y'all talked about it on the podcast, mm -hmm. like right after that. Mm -hmm. and, and PJ talked about it, I mm -hmm. think, during one of his, his messages. So mm -hmm. I was like, oh, you know, that was like, and I've like never heard of it before. Mm -hmm. It explained that way. Mm -hmm. And then I hear it explained that way three times within That's awesome. like two weeks, mm -hmm. I think it was. So I was That's like, so okay, good. thank you. Thanks it's clear. God, I got you. Yeah, I got <laughs> It's you. so good. We're out of time for today, but I'm thinking about, we always try to end with like a call to action. Like what's our responsibility with a message like this? How do I respond to that? Part of what I heard you saying is um, even just having your battle buddy so that you are continuing to grow and uh, having that battle buddy, that biblical community that's alongside of you, that you're letting them into the vulnerable places. Mm -hmm. They can even help you recognize Hey, you are, you're talking like you are unqualified again, mm -hmm. or you're talking yeah. like you're the skeptic or whatever. And that's not who you are. Yeah. You know who Jesus is and you, maybe you need to come and see him again. So I do feel like we never arrive. It's mm -hmm. a constant invitation to come and see, because every time we open his word, every time we're in his presence, every time we face a situation, we have an opportunity to learn another aspect of who God is. Absolutely. And so that, that is just we are always needing to come and see, come and see and come and follow me. Mm -hmm. Is there anything real quick that you would say would be a call to action to the listeners? Yeah, I mean, like I said, like my my passion for iron, iron sharpening iron, like you said, is mm -hmm. like find somebody, mm -hmm. like seriously, find, especially men, like go go out of your comfort zone, mm -hmm. go shake hands with somebody, maybe mm -hmm. a, a, someone you haven't met before mm -hmm. and build that relationship. 
Like Wednesday night is a really good way Wednesday that we nights, do it yes. because on Wednesday nights we split up into men's and women's group and um, the women are out doing the men right now. Uh, it used to be the other way around, but um, and the men are just around smaller groups of men in at a table and you kind of get to know each other and you know your life a little bit and we're studying the Bible and then how does that apply to my life yeah. um, and seeing people through relationship growing in their faith um, and that's a, an immediate way and things like the men's breakfast and men's things that we do of just... Um, we need each other. Men need each other Absolutely. and they need to learn that it is uh, actually um, it's a beautiful thing to watch men pursue Jesus, to be yeah. humble enough to pursue him makes them look even stronger. Yeah. And um, it's a beautiful thing. But yeah. thank you so much, Justin, for being here today. I appreciate it. You'll definitely be back. PJ was bummed. He was going to miss you today. And I know he's wanted you on the podcast for a while. So thank you listeners for being here with us today. If you have questions, comments, um, maybe you want to be a guest, shoot us an email. I can't say I can control all the yeses, but you can ask. I teach my kids, always ask. So email us at podcast at goodnews.church. We love you guys. We hope that you are really pursuing Jesus. Let him show you who he really is. And we will talk to you next time. Thanks again for joining us today. We would love for you to tell others about the podcast. Make sure you subscribe to it too, because this will help others find out about it. If you missed it before, we love to hear from you. So if you have any stories to tell about how the message impacted you, or maybe you have a question or comment, make sure you email us at podcast at goodnews.church. Y'all, this is my favorite day of the week. So go give away what you just learned and we'll chat again next time.